A few weeks ago, some very excitable science journalists were plastering the internet with headlines like, Fifth Fundamental Force of Nature Discovered. What was that all about? Is there really a new force? Can I finally get my X-Wing out of that swamp? Let me make it sound a little less hyped. There was something slightly weird about how a bunch of beryllium atoms were acting that told physicists that for a tiny fraction of a second, an unknown particle may have existed. Hmm, all right, let me make it sound a little more hyped, but also a lot more specific. Atomic nuclei have energy levels, just like their electron shells do. Protons and neutrons can occupy excited states, contain excess energy. And when they settle down again, they give off that energy as photons, but also sometimes as a particle or a particle-antiparticle pair. One thing that comes out of a pile of beryllium-8 atoms is a lot of electron-positron pairs. They can pop out at a lot of different energies. Researchers noticed a slight excess in their energies at 17 mega electron volts. It's as though something with a mass energy equivalence of 17 MeV was decaying into those particles. Now this might sound a little bit familiar. The same sort of excess in the photons emitted after proton collisions in the Large Hadron Collider led to the discovery of the Higgs boson. Just recently, a new very slight excess at the LHC was originally thought to be a new particle, but was discovered to have been a statistical fluke. But this excess in the beryllium-8 decay is not slight. It's now a 6.8 sigma excess, which is statistic ease for it being pretty darn certain that something weird is going on. But why do they think that the mysterious 17 MeV particle is a new type of fundamental force? Well, in short, it's because the anomaly was observed for a very particular transition between the beryllium nuclear states. That transition meant a difference in energy, but also a difference in some other quantum stuff. Spin parity and isospin. And the easiest way to explain this is if a spin 1 gauge boson was created. Such a particle would be a mild extension of the standard model. Not too crazy, but certainly brand new physics. Yes, a new spin 1 gauge boson. No, seriously, this is awesome if it's true. See, three of the four fundamental forces, electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces, are all communicated by these gauge boson things. A new gauge boson means a new fundamental force. Why are we only spotting this thing now? Well, the standard wisdom for finding new particles is to create higher and higher energies, hence the Large Hadron Collider. Any particle capable of existing at lower energies should have been spotted. But that's not true if the particle is a ninja. By that, I mean dark to electromagnetism and generally interacting with regular matter very little. If that's the case, it could be produced at much lower energies than the giga electron volt energies produced in the LHC, like the mega electron volt transitions of atomic nuclear energy levels. If the decay product of such a transition is very weakly interacting, these particles could be everywhere and we wouldn't know it. Like ninjas. And like dark matter. In fact, this is a tantalizing possibility. Not that dark matter is ninjas, although as a scientist I'd need to test that before I ruled it out. No, I mean that this new particle may have something to do with dark matter. It's very weakly interacting, but the researchers suggest it could mediate interactions between the so-called dark sector and the visible universe. Okay, on to the solution to the quantum eraser challenge. To summarize, I asked you to tell me why it's impossible to send any real data back in time using the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment, and so cheat on the lottery. Remember, the landing location of each individual photon passing through to the interference screen of this experiment does seem to be influenced by a decision that is made regarding each of those photons entangled partners in the future. That decision was whether we would know the path of the original photon, thus eliminating an interference pattern, or to erase our knowledge of that path, which brings the interference pattern back. That decision is made randomly by a beam splitter in the original experiment, but it's conceivable that the experiment could be adjusted so that a person could make the decision. 
so why can't I send winning lottery numbers back to myself? The reason is that there's absolutely no way to tell if any given photon at the interference screen has a known path until you compare the results of the screen with the results at the detector. In fact, the distribution of photons at the screen always looks like a single blurred distribution. There's no visible interference pattern at all. It's only when you flag which photons had twins arriving at detectors A, B, C or D that you see patterns arise. In fact, even if you remove all of the A and B photons, you still don't see an interference pattern until you distinguish C versus D. And this is because those photons have interference bands that are exactly out of phase. The peaks of C line up with the troughs of D, and together they look like the same sort of blur you get if you combine A and B. This is pretty insane. The photon positions are decided, and presumably those patterns are embedded in the distribution. Those embedded patterns are set by the eventual destination of the entangled partners of those photons, but the distribution may be in place long before those twins finish their journey. Yet we can't extract the patterns of the photons that landed at the screen until we get the information of which detectors their entangled twins hit. That information can't travel backwards in time or faster than light. So unfortunately this means the information about the winning lottery numbers remain embedded in the pattern and lost to us until after the numbers are drawn. If your name appears below, you got this right and described your reason well. You guys should email your names, addresses, US t-shirt sizes, so small, medium, large, etc. to pbsspacetime at gmail.com. Also, let us know which of these t-shirts you want. We'll send it right out to you. For the rest of you, you can still grab a Spacetime t-shirt of your very own via the link in the description. Okay, that's the answer. But there's still time for a mini rant about the role of consciousness in quantum mechanics. The delayed choice in this experiment is whether or not to know the path of the original photon, or whether to erase that knowledge. But don't take this too literally. We don't need to invoke conscious knowledge to explain the results. If either detectors A or B are triggered, then there's an asymmetry in the global wave function passing through one slit versus the other. And this can lead to decoherence. Admittedly, this decoherence appears to affect the wave function at times before the apparent cause of the decoherence, but this doesn't end up violating causality, and so it's way less out there than photons somehow knowing that in the future some conscious mind will know its path. Frankly, it's all just so weird. And amazing. Amazing enough without inventing mystical interpretations that somehow give us psychic wave function collapsing powers as much as we'd all like to believe we have them. Nonetheless, there is a clue somewhere in all this weirdness to the fundamental workings of space-time. Oh, <laughs> oh,